Hi, I'm Kirk Harnack with the Telos Alliance. We're going to talk about different ways of connecting the studio and, say, a transmitter site, making a studio to transmitter link, using IP audio. Now, lots of stations are doing this now, and they're finding different ways to connect, to get that IP link between the studio and the transmitter. Of course, one of the most popular ways, because it's fairly easy, is to use the public internet. So you have Comcast or AT&T or Time Warner, whoever your ISP is, uh, providing you with service, hopefully the same provider at both ends. That way your audio doesn't have to go to some peering point out of town and then come back again. Hopefully you can keep that uh, IP path within the city that you're in. But if you have to go from city to city, that works uh, okay too. Uh, so public internet is one way to get this done, and it's the probably the easiest and most popular way. Other ways, though, is you can use a T1 circuit uh, outfitted with equipment at each end to make it uh, packetized. Uh, so you can you can have a direct link between two locations that's packetized. will carry uh, Ethernet packets. Another way is to use IP radios. This is becoming quite popular if you have line of sight between the studio and the transmitter site. Now, if you have line of sight, well, you may already be using something like 950 megahertz STLs, as uh, broadcasters have done for decades now. But using IP gives you some extra choices and things you can do. For example, IP security cameras at the transmitter site, you can bring those back. You can have a telephone, an IP phone at the transmitter site and provide dial tone out there from your phone system. Lots of other possibilities. Anything you can do over IP, you could do with uh, an IP radio link. So there are different choices for getting a ZIP-1 connected to another ZIP-1. You just need a good IP path between the two sites. Using external equipment, it's also possible to have redundant IP paths and automatic switchover by using, for example, load balancing routers or switching routers that will switch between one WAN connection and another. The benefits of the ZIP-1, let's cover a couple of those. A lot of folks are using it because it's small, one rack unit, fanless, so it's perfectly quiet. It has a selection of coding algorithms, so you're not stuck with just one or two algorithms. There's about uh, six different algorithms in there, including, optionally, Aptex coding if you want to use that. If you're comfortable with Aptex, there's AAC, uh, high-efficiency AAC, uh, and a low-delay version of AAC, AAC low-delay, as well as AAC ELD, enhanced low-delay. Uh, all of these, uh, oh, Layer 2 as well, MPEG Layer 2 for legacy-type systems, and people who just prefer MPEG Layer 2. Also, a variety of bit rates. Nearly every available bit rate uh, for those codecs that's allowed is built into the ZIP-1. There's also linear coding, coding, if you will. You can, uh, If you have the bandwidth and you have the reliability, you can certainly send bit-for-bit bit digital audio from one end to the other over an IP connection. You can work between sites that uh, don't have a static IP address if you'll use the Telos ZIP server. It's free to use, and uh, the ZIP server simply uh, tracks the IP address of your units so you can have them call each other without uh, knowing their IP address or if their IP address is changing. The ZIP server um, also helps you get across NAT routers firewalls. So there is a NAT traversal aspect to the ZIP server if that's what you need. For a full-time STL connection, we really recommend using static IP addresses and doing a port forward through your router just to your ZIP-1 so you can send uh, audio directly to it without having to do all the uh, NAT traversal things that happen automatically. But still, if, if you can get a direct connection in there, that's really the ideal way to get that done. Now, what about there are three ways, three recommended ways to connect a couple of zip ones together in an STL environment. Full time is what we're going to assume here. The first way is really the easiest way. Not sure it's the very best way, but it's the easiest way and it does work perfectly well. And that is to use the Telos Zip server to help make your call. The Zip server just tracks the IP address at both ends. It lets you dial up the friendly name of the other end on your uh, on, on your Zip 1 and press connect and off you go. You're connected to the other end. Uh, if you use the Zip server, you are using a protocol called TSCP. That's Telosystems Control Protocol. And it lets the two zip ones talk to each other to automatically adjust the receive buffer. And if the receive buffer is uh, just getting too full and the, uh, the receive end needs for the transmitting end to slow down a bit and use a lower bit rate, TSCP allows that to happen. And using the zip server, it happens all automatically. So it's a great way to, to get that done. With the zip server, you simply give uh, each zip its own friendly name. You connect it to the zip server. Typically, there's not even any 
uh, router configuration that has to be done, uh, although you can to speed up the uh, the connection uh, uh, time. And um, bam, you can connect, and that's how uh, that's how the Quick Start Guide shows using a Zip One. So if you follow the Quick Start Guide that came with the Zip One, you should be able to connect two of them together in just literally a few minutes. Now, the next kind of connection that you can use is a direct TSCP call. Again, TSCP, Telesystems Control Protocol. In a direct TSCP call, you get all the benefits of the agile connection technology. That is the automatic buffering, automatic bitrate between two ZIP ones. Uh, but you don't use the ZIP server to get the connection made. You don't keep track of IP addresses. To use direct TSCP, uh, you must have a static IP address on your ZIP ones, and they've got to be able to see each other. In fact, you do need to open a port on the firewall so that one ZIP one can talk directly to the other ZIP one, again, without intervention or assistance from the ZIP server. So if you're on an IP radio link or a private T1 or a private WAN, making a direct TSCP call is a great way to go. Or if you do have a static IP address from your ISP, uh, then using direct TSCP can uh, at least eliminate the little extra bit of uh, going through the, the, the ZIP server for presence information. And the third type of connection that you can do with a ZIP-1 is called RTP, and we call it RTP push, because literally the encoding ZIP-1 is pushing an IP stream to the other end. Now, when you use RTP push, you really don't have a two-way connection going on, at least not for handshaking of data. What you do have um, is, uh, is just a direct push to it. You don't get the return um, data, so you don't get automatic bit rate control, but you still have automatic buffering size at the receive end. That functionality is still there. There's another variation on RTP push, and that is symmetric RTP. Symmetric RTP is when you send a, an IP audio stream to uh, one codec, that codec knows to return an IP audio stream exactly back over the same path uh, to the same place where uh, from from whence the first IP stream came from. So those are the three major ways of connecting. Again, through the ZIP server, that's easy peasy, easy to set up, quick to set up, works with about 95% of all routers out there without further configuration. The only downside is uh, you're depending upon the ZIP server to provide presence information and to you know knock on the door and complete that phone call, uh, that connection call. Uh, and uh, if, for example, the routers are particularly restrictive at either end, then the ZIP server will relay the media itself. It won't be a peer-to-peer -peer call. The, your audio will get relayed through the ZIP server. And that could be hundreds or thousands of miles away from you. So it adds a little bit of uh, uncertainty and risk there. Uh, so if you make a direct call, you're better off. That direct TSCP call, again, you must have uh, static IP addresses and a port open. But you do that, and you get the benefit of a direct, absolutely direct call, and you get all the benefits of the Agile connection technology. And then finally, the RTP push call. This is what so many other codecs on the market do. And uh, it's just pushing a stream to a fixed IP address and port number. Uh, you can automatically get a return stream if you want to. With any of these calls, you get RS-232 data and GPIO from end to end. With any of these types of calls through the ZIP server, direct TSCP, or an RTP push or symmetric call, you get automatic reconnection if something goes wrong. So if the internet connection goes out or your IP connection goes away for a time, uh, it'll reconnect automatically. If uh, the power goes out, well, when the power comes back on, it'll reconnect automatically. Other videos in this series will help you choose which coding algorithm is exactly right for your needs, which is going to work best for you. And another video on exactly how to set up each kind of connection call. Thanks for watching, and thanks for using the Telos Zip 1 for your full time or backup STL. Thank you.